This lesson will be about subroutines and procedures. So firstly, we've got an example of a procedure in Python. So the def, def, stands for define. So you have to use that to define your procedure. Once you've put def, you need to put the name of your procedure. So this could be anything, but you have to make sure it's appropriate um, to what the procedure does. For example, if the procedure asks for names, normally you would need to use names as your procedure. Then we've got a question, so choice equals input. So that's a variable and we're asking a normal question. And then we're using a print command. You can see that after the name of the procedure, we open a parentheses and we close it and then we put a colon. And everything inside the procedure needs to be indented. If it's not indented, it means it's not inside the procedure. Now, this, these three lines of code will do nothing. The only way for it to work is to call your procedure. So you tell it, I want to run this procedure. So names, so you call your procedure name. So you just type the name of your procedure and then you open the parentheses and you close the parentheses. This will run your procedure. Because I've done it twice, it will run it twice. Now here we have another example. So we can see again, def defines the procedure name. Welcome is the procedure name. And here we have a parameter. So a parameter is a variable that is used to receive data from the argument. So it's normally inside the function, inside the brackets, well, the parentheses. So the arguments are the values at the bottom. So these are called arguments. So these values, so Alex and Tom, they are passed into name. Now, if I just type print welcome to school name, this will do nothing. It will not display anything. It will give me an error because name does not have any value. The variable name does not have any value. But because we put welcome and then in the parentheses, I put Alex, I've passed the value Alex into name. Now name will have a value. So this program will display Alex and then also welcome to school Alex and then Tom. So if I run it here, you can see that it displays welcome to school Alex and welcome to school Tom. If I change the value of Alex to say Martin, it will display welcome to school Martin. So this variable, so this value Martin, which is called an argument, is being passed into name. And then here it says welcome, welcome to school name. So what we can do is we can literally also do that. So we can ask for name in the main program. So enter a name. Then we can pass the value of name here into, uh, we can use it as the argument to pass it into the parameter. So here is, well, name is the argument. Then at the top, name is the parameter. So when I pass it, so when I run it, say Tom, it will pass Tom from this variable name into the argument and from the argument all the way into the parameter name. So you can use multiple parameters if you want. So here we have a procedure called calculate and this will have two parameters num and num2. Then we're doing num times num2 but then num and num2 does not have any values so we need to use arguments. So the arguments here is 2 and 4. So 2 will be passed into num, 4 will be passed into num2. Then it will do 2 times 4 which is 8. So it will display 8, then it will display 5 times 6 which is 30. Now here we have an example of a procedure. So we've got def numbers and then num. So this whole procedure will not run until it's being called. So the first thing that will actually run in this example is the for loop. So you're not gonna bother checking anything at the top right now. You're gonna go all the way to for x in range of five. So firstly, we've got choice, which is five because it says we've entered five into the program right to the top. Then we've got num equals choice plus two. So now num 
is 7 because 5 plus 2 is 7. Then it says numbers and then num. So numbers is our procedure name right at the top. So numbers and when you open in the parentheses, this will call your procedure. So it will run all of this code. Now when it does that, it will pass num into num right at the top. So the argument num will be passed into num, which is the parameter right at the top. Then it says if num is greater than 10. So is 7 greater than 10? No, that is not. So we go down. Is 7 greater than or equal to 20? No. So it goes to else, which is bad. So we'll display bad. Then that's it. Our procedure finished. We go back to the for loop. We go to the next choice. Next choice is 18, as we have it right at the top in the question. 18 plus 2, num is now 20. Then we pass 20, which is num, into the function, well, into the procedure, right at the top. So now num contains 20. If num is greater than 10 and num is less than 20, no, because num is not less than 20. Then it says, else if num is greater than or equal to 20. Yes, that's true, because it is equal to 20. So we display good. And then we're done with our procedure again. So we go back all the way to the for loop. Next choice. Because this will loop five times. Because for x in range of five, it means it will loop five times. So all this process will happen five times. That's why we're doing it five times. That's why there are five different rows here. So next choice is 15. Add two, that's 17. And now we've got 17 is inside the first if. So if num is greater than 10 and num is less than 20. So 17 will display almost. Then it's 100 and 100 plus 2 is 102 and it will display good and the final one is 17 and then 17 plus 2 is 19 and then we run our procedure again 19 is passed into num the parameter at the top and then 19 is between 10 and 20 so it will display almost now they might also ask you about the definitions of each of these. So subroutine is a self-contained section of code. So is this part, all of this is called a subroutine. So from def numbers and everything that is indented, that is part of the subroutine. So it's a self-contained section of code. It will only run when it's called. It will not run if it's not called. This is why it's good to uh, it's, it is a good idea to use procedures or subroutines to test code because you can only you can only run this part of code so only that part can be tested which makes it easy to identify errors then we have the parameters which are the special variables used in subprograms to pass values into sub program so at the top in the parentheses num that's the parameter then we have arguments which is the actual values that pass that parameters take into the subprograms which is num again in uh, at the bottom we've got num so this num will be is the argument and it will be passed all the way into num at the top which is the parameter so they do have the same name but at the bottom they are represented as argument at the top they are the parameters and then they might ask about advantages of subroutines so the program is easier to read easier to test and because each individual procedure can be tested one at a time and then also different programmers can work on different subroutines for example if you game it in game development we've got some who can work on movement some who can who can work on um, character shooting or performing some actions and so on and then we've got subroutines that can be reused so you can call that subroutine as many times as you want you can Instead of retyping the whole of the code, you can just call its name and it will run. So the code can be reused as many times as we want, rather than rewrite the code. 